Imagine it's 1400 years ago. It's the 9th of Muharram. You're in your tent and at night you hear noises and commotion coming from outside. Naturally, you leave your tent, you go outside to see what's going on and you see people abandoning the camp of Imam Hussain in the hundreds and thousands. Looking around confused, for just a split second your eyes fall into the eyes of Imam Hussain There and then you decide you're going to stay, you're not going to leave him alone. The morning comes, it's the day of Ashura. You're now the 73rd companion of Imam Hussain Imagine you walk up to the Imam and you offer yourself to him, you offer your service to him and he says to you, it's your choice what you want to do. So for example, now you know you can go and bring back water with Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas you could protect the tents of the women and children. You could keep the small children busy while their fathers, brothers, uncles are battling. You could help the wounded. You could stand as a shield for Imam Hussain while he's praying. What part of Ashura would you want to volunteer for or participate in? Um, my personal opinion, I'll try to put myself in a like and everywhere, you know, be part of you know, like you know, I'll I'll protect, you know, I'll, I'll always obviously I would love to stand and fight against terror, you know. Um I personally would like to stand behind you know, Hussein and you know be uh, protect him, you know, and fight against the terror that I have plotted against him and you know be part of justice and help you know because each human has the right to do what they, they sh you know like each human has the right to drink water each human has the right to pray you know, so there's no one that should be standing against that and tell you you're not allowed to drink, you're not allowed to pray, you know. That is, you know, that's not, that's not fair to anyone. Um, yeah, and so I would, I would be part of, if, if, if someone would be, want to, would, would someone was willing to pray and ask me to be a shield, I would stand there happily and with, I'll stand there with pr pr proudly and I'll protect that person that wants to pray because God is someone that he deserves to be prayed to. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to be part of a, a, sh a shield of someone that's praying. So, yeah, um, yeah, and of, and of course I would look after you know, children that are in need, you know, because I love children. I've got two little brothers myself. Um, so yeah, you know, um, if I see little small kids that are thirsty and want water, I'll definitely try and bring them some water myself, if anything, you know, because um, if you're, at a certain age in the desert and you're thirsty and you've got a dry mouth what would the little kid imagine to himself you know and he can't even speak he can't communicate with you he can't even tell you that I'm thirsty you wouldn't really know so it's kind of hard for the child for, to actually you know to, to tell you that he's thirsty and not giving him water is even that's like torture you know, you're torturing the, the, a child and that's against humanity, I guess. Now imagine you've
you've had a long day at work. You come home tired, you open the door, you walk into your house and you see members of your family running around the house. One person's organizing fruit, another person's making food, another person's making tea. And you think to yourself, we've got guests, someone's come round to see us. So you grab someone and you say to them, who's come to see us? Why, why is everyone rushing around like this? And they reply to you, they haven't come to see us. They've come to see you. So you think to yourself, maybe it's a work colleague, it's someone you knew from university or school, or it's a friend, or it's someone from the mosque. So you go to the living room, you open the door, you walk in, and you see sitting in your living room on your chair is Imam Hussain alayhi salam. In that moment, what would you say to him? What would you want him to say to you? I'll, 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 I'll first of all, I'll go there. I'll, you know, I'll kiss his head and I'll thank him for coming to me for, you know, um, spending his time to come and spending it with me instead of somewhere else because it's it's an honor you know it's an honor to to be someone that is recognized by someone that's special you know and it takes courage and it takes a lot of things to be in that position because it's 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 difficult to stand against a crowd that is against you. You know it's not easy, and doing that you need to have a lot of confidence, a lot of a lot of information, a lot of knowledge. Because at the end of the day you're going to stand alone. No one's going to be with you, and then someone coming to you and you know congratulate you like. Come, you know, after it's like it's an achievement. You know, when he comes to you after going through through all that struggle, so it's an achievement. And the, um, what, I want him to say that he knows that I, that I love him. You know, I want him to know that. You know, um, yeah, that's the main thing. To be honest. How would you feel if he said, I love you too, for example, or I've accepted your service to me. I accept you as one of my servants. How would that make you feel? That is a dream come true. That is something that I've always wanted to be, always wanted, always tried hard to be that person. You know, it was hard, you know, people telling me other things, but always believed what the truth is and thus stuck to the truth and I will hold on to the truth until the day I'll be that person and when I meet him and he'll tell me you know I love you too I will do everything anything to to get to that stage yeah it'll be my dream come true at the beginning I asked you about 1400 years ago now, we know what happened more or less on that day. So it might be easy to say, if I was there, I could have maybe stopped this, or I could have helped with that, or I could have potentially delayed this tragedy happening to this person in such a way. And I said to you, you walk up to the Imam and the Imam gives you the choice. So you can pick where you want to serve. In this day and age, in today's age, a lot of us forget we have a 12th Imam with us. And in a way, him being at least physically absent from us gives us a choice in how we want to serve him. Because he's not here to tell us to, for example, pick this up, go and do this, go and stop that. So we have to use our own logic and understanding to do things for him and on his behalf to try and aid him in some way. So I guess my final question is, what have you done for the 12th Imam? How do you think he feels about you? 
Do you think if he came to your house, would he turn around and say, I love you too as well? Mm. Well, I have, you know, I've, um, I've, I've, I've followed the, the manners of the Imam, the way he was treating people, you know, the way he was speaking. But I can't be him, you know, he's better than me. But I'm trying to be good and I'm spreading the word, you know, I'm spreading love. Evil people come to me, I'll, I'll give them positive uh, feedback. And because if I believe if, if, if a negative person comes to you and you approach them in a negative way, it will escalate in a very negative situation. But if you, anything that comes to you and you, you, you take, obviously you, you, you reply with a positive answer, you always have a good result. You know, believe me when I say, because in every situation you're in, if you have an optimistic mindset, you will always end up in a good, in a good situation because it's um, evil meets evil creates you know danger and just anger and just all the bad things all the negative stuff but if good meets bad you can make both become good because good is spreads around it's like it's like, a, it's like a tree, you know, it's like a seed, you, you grow it and it becomes big and it just, everyone will start following and, you know, it's, it's hard to change people's minds because people are ignorant, um, they like to believe what they say, they don't like to, like, especially in this day and age, it's that people will like to they don't like to be told, they don't like to be, you know, they don't like to do what they've been told. It's like they want to do what they want, it's what they think in their head, think is all right, not what others tell them to. And that's difficult because when, when you try to teach someone, they're going to turn around and, 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 and say, oh, like, why can't he be like that? Because you're saying it to me, why are you not saying it to him? He's worse than me. Then again, he's saying it to you because you're, you're the one who's probably gonna pass on the message to, to him. So that's why you always have to have optimistic approach to, to the person that you're talking to. Maybe you look, because you, you always learn something from someone and if you, if you spread the good, if you spread good, good will come back to you, and it's it's a cycle of life. It's, you know, it's like, and it's common sense mostly as well. You know, if, if you do bad, bad will come back because if you hurt somebody, this guy's not gonna forget that you hurt him, and he's gonna come back to hurt you. Maybe not now, maybe in five years. But if you did good to this person, this person's not gonna forget that either. And maybe in the future, if he's successful, he's going to come back and help you the way you helped him. So that's mostly, yeah. And I believe that I could have done more good and then, and just done less decisions when I was angry. Because when you're angry, you, you shouldn't really do any decisions. And yeah, um, I believe that every human should just every human should be just good and yeah be optimistic <laughs> خدا
خدا کند که بیای خدا کند تو نور غیر نواییم خدا کند 